All right, thank y'all for tuning in to this week's episode of Chop the Rock. I am Diana Long with the Little Rock River Market, and we are here today with Kobe Smith, who is the chef at the Heart Hospital. And so you may be wondering, um, you know, what's so special about hospital food? Um, and here in Little Rock, we are lucky enough to have kind of just a crazy thing where they've got such great food. That's right. Um, in the hospitals. What, just restaurant down in the right. lobby area? The lobby and is along, along with patients. You know, when I came to the Heart Hospital, um, one of my selling points was we wanted to have uh, food with integrity that's affordable. Um, and that's kind of been our tagline. Um, so we can, you know, you can come in at our cafe and, and have lunch for, you know, five or six bucks. And people, like when you say, I had lunch today at the hospital, people mm -hmm. go, oh, are you, are you sick? Are you visiting someone? And the answer here is, no, their food's that good. That's right. We purposefully go over there just to get lunch. So that, that's that's right. I have people that come from downtown to have our uh, authentic Japanese ramen. Um, we do fresh fish on Fridays that have flown in. Um, you know, we're not there to make money, but we're there to just serve the community and, and, and just make people happy. Yeah, and, and it's a really good example of how you can eat some healthy food and it doesn't have to taste like hospital food exactly. traditionally does. Exactly. Well, okay, so let's let's show everybody what makes this so special here. You have got all of some very fancy tools I and do. I'm excited to see you tell us all about okay. today. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sous vide some beef. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the beef in. Um, it's already sealed. Uh, we're cooking it at 132 degrees. And we'll just put that in there. Um, I've got a, a temperature gauge right here that'll tell me when it's exactly done. Um, but while that's going, I'm going to go ahead and trim up this beef so you'll know kind of how to do it. Um, you know, this is more the most economical way to do it if you're going to have tenderloin uh -huh. is to buy it, you know, from Sam's or, or somewhere like that. And, and what we're going to do is just take off all this fat, all this silver skin, mm -hmm. um, you know, so you're, you're left with just some really lean meat. Right. So that's healthier and then you also don't that's want right. it to. And, and we actually serve this tenderloin to our patients. Okay. Um, I think a lot of, a lot of hospitals, um, go with some a lot of cheaper meats, but but we do on on Saturday nights when people would rather be at home. We serve them, uh, you know, beef tenderloin. That's nice. That's right. Explain though a little bit of what I had never heard of a sous vide. Is that did mm -hmm. I say it correctly? You did. So so tell us what I mean. What's different about that? I mean, obviously it's in a sealed bag. Are there seasonings in there with it? Uh, I've got a little cl clarified butter. That's about it. Uh -huh. um, after I take it out of the bag, I will season it uh, with a little bit of salt and pepper. But the, really the trick is, is it, 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 it allows me to cook something at the exact temperature. So if I want to cook beef at 132 degrees, it doesn't matter how long I keep it at that machine, it's never going to get over 132 degrees. Gotcha. Um, beef short ribs is a great example. When you cook short ribs, um, typically you braise them for four or five hours, you know, 300, 350 degrees to break down that connective tissue to make them tender. Well, what I'll do is a sous vide machine, I'll cook them for 72 hours at 132 degrees. Ah. And it allows me to get a, like a medium rare uh, short rib, which gotcha. is delicious. Yeah, okay, and also it still has that, it still breaks down that connective tissue. Abs yes, absolutely. Without overcooking it, so you can have the, the tenderness and the um, amount of doneness that That's you That's exactly prefer. right. Okay. So this okay. is basically, you know, cleaned up. And from here, we just you know cut in portions, and that's what I've done already. That's sealed in the bag. Gotcha. And I'll just go ahead and put this up. Um, we'll clean that up. Get these things. Um, next thing we're going to do is we've got some cauliflower here. We're going to make a pesto mashed cauliflower. So we're going to add this to our boiling water, and we'll just let that cook until it's really nice and tender. About how long does that take? Uh, 15 minutes or so. 15 minutes. Yeah, you just want to be able to mash it really easily. Gotcha. And cauliflower is like the new thing that That's everyone's right. mashing up and That's making right. things out of that don't taste much like cauliflower yeah. when they're done. That's right. Um, a lot of times people add cream and butter to it, but this time we're just going to add pesto mm -hmm. and a little salt and pepper um, and make it really healthy, um, nutritious, that sort of thing. Uh, next thing we're going to do is, so I've got uh, what's called an ISI uh, maker. It's a uh, thermo whip, mm -hmm. and so we're going to pickle some vegetables in here, and so I've got some uh, asparagus. Okay, so you took like small, like yeah. just bite-sized pieces. Yeah, and of I actually asparagus. just took the uh, just the tips. Gotcha. Not add. the the part on the end. I, when I get asparagus at home, I do that 
you where break, you break, break it. Break one in. Yeah. yeah, wherever the natural break is, right. and then that gets all of the, the not quite so tender pieces. And, right. And, uh, usually I'll break one off and then from there I'll, I'll cut the rest of them off. Okay. Um, and so then I've got some uh, sliced radishes and garlic that I'm going to add to it. And this is a really cool trick. Um, I mean, it, it, it pickles it immediately. So it's like insta-pickle. Absolutely. Uh, we've got some onions. Um, these are shallots actually. Um, so we're going to make a little, you know, pickled vegetable salad. Um, and then I've taken some tomatoes that I have uh, peeled mm -hmm. and we're going to add those in there. So those are grape tomatoes, right? Uh, these are grape tomatoes. Grape tomatoes, but you could use a cherry tomato. Mm -hmm. You want it to be something that's small right. so that it's whole. And you right. just, did, how, what do you do when you skin them like that? Do you so blanch I just them? Bla for, I take okay. a, like a paring knife and make a little X on them and mm -hmm. just blanch them uh, for about 10 or 12 seconds. Yeah. And then uh, shock them in the water and they, they peel just right off. Just loosens the skin right that's off. Right. Okay. So I add a little bit of sugar and a little bit of salt. Is that a specific that looks like? This is just regular kosher salt. Kosher salt, okay. Right. I've already added some water to it because the vinegar is a little bit strong. And so we're gonna add some, uh, or I actually added some water to it. Now we're gonna add a little bit of vinegar. Um, and from here, I put my little strainer on here. And then we'll add this to it. And then we charge it. So what is the charging it did? Pressurizes it? Yes, pressurizes it. Gotcha. And then you just shake it up a little bit. Shake it up. And I'm even, I'm even, I'm going to charge it twice just because I've got so much stuff in there. Uh -huh. And these are just the little CO2 cartridges. Gotcha. And. Now, are these things that if I wanted to be fancy and do this at home, uh -huh. I can get my hands on one of these? Yeah, you can go to William Sonoma and buy these. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So a, a cooking store you should be able to find. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of those around Little Rock, That's whether right. it's Eggshells or William Sonoma, so Krebs, we'll any of those supplier houses might Absolutely. have those as well. So we'll okay. just let that sit there for a little while, um, kind of marinate, that sort of thing. And uh, you left it charged this time? Left it charged. Okay. And you got to be careful when you uncharge it because we have to, you know, release so the pressure. So just it doesn't like a pressure cooker, it won't blow up on you. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, so our beef is at 107 right now, and we're going for 132. So just a couple more minutes, probably. It's climbing pretty fast. Um, and you can see it. I mean, I know that you mm -hmm. can't really see this on the screen, but you can see that it's changing, like its color a little bit to a more cooked color. Correct. Right. Right. And it really doesn't do it doesn't take that long i usually when i do uh, cooking competitions this is kind of how i'll do it mm. um cook it at a higher temperature and then probe it with some double sided tape um and that's just speeds up the, the cooking process okay. so if i was going to do it at 132 it might take an hour to do but since i've done it at 160 the, the time just shortens a lot gotcha gotcha uh, okay we'll check our so our cauliflower's been going at, right. a, at a, like a rolling boil back here That's for right. a few minutes. And then I started a sauce already, and this is what we call a, uh, a gastrique, and which is red wine and uh, sugar, and we're just reducing it down to a syrup. And I added just a little bit of thyme to it just to kind of give it a little extra um, oomph. And this is something that you could you could make at home. That's oh, not going to take. Is, yeah, this is super easy. Just you just want to be careful that you don't get your heat too high and right. burn it. You just want to simmer can, it, let it cook right. down, and reduce. You can burn right? it really quickly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, kind of uh, ahead of schedule. Um, and so here, once our beef is done, we're gonna smoke our beef. Um, this is called a smoking gun, and uh, we'll just have to wait a couple minutes till we can pull our beef out. And we're so, at, we're at 112 right now. So, so while we're waiting for this, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit more about the Heart Hospital. Um, and, you know, just what the, uh, they have some very, very incredible programs there and kind of some cutting edge. We do, we have lots of different clinics. Um, one of our new ones is a uh, intensive cardiac rehab where we actually offer classes. Um, Medicaid, Medicare will pay for those classes if you qualify. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it goes from exercising to cooking classes to yoga. Um, I mean, it's really a cool program. It Comprehensive. Helps people, yeah, it helps people get back into shape and really 
after they've had a traumatic experience, it helps them get in shape and learn how to live a better life. Gotcha, so it's like a, a entirely new way of living that you have to learn once That's you right. realize. I think it's easy for a lot of people to, kind of life gets in the way of living a little bit. You just get into that everyday yes. routine yes. and you look up and you're stressed out right. and have high blood pressure, maybe some other issues and some, right. maybe some weight and then Sometimes it takes having a sudden heart attack or other issue to kind of really wake people up. Well, there, there's several different uh, qualifications that can get you into the program. Uh, you don't have to be, you don't have to go to the heart hospital. You could have another doctor from, you know, another hospital could refer you there. Oh, great. Um, it's been a great program. Um, we're actually building another one in, in, in Russellville. Um, you know, we've had, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people come through there. It's been a really great thing. That's awesome. Um, other programs we've got, uh, you know, we have a really nice wound care center that, that helps people, treats their, with their wounds, uh, congestive heart failure. Um, I mean, it really, it, it doesn't stop. We're not just a heart hospital. We, we have a full service ER where you can get in and get out. Um, probably the fastest time in, our, in, in, in Little Rock for sure. You can get in and out really, That's really nice quick. for yes. that, that yes. location I, I've too. had a friend that um, daughter broke her arm and they went there to the heart hospital and they were they were being treated within 10 minutes. Wow, okay, that's good to know because yes, yes, you yes. would not think that with just it being the heart hospital. That's right. It sounds like you would have to have that kind of condition. That's right, so, um, so full service ER. So I'm gonna take this and, and drain it into here. All right. So is this about, that's about a head of cauliflower, right? Yeah, yeah okay. it was exactly one head. Okay. And I'll have you just start mashing that. Okay. It'll take a minute. So if you, I mean, I think hand mashing is perfectly great for this kind of thing. And you get a little bit of an exercise yeah. in the process, but obviously you could use like one of those little hand blenders or food processor, even a blender. Yep, hand mixer. Um, you know, a KitchenAid works great. Um, you know, we do this a lot and it's pretty popular. So this is something that you can find these sides on the menu. Mm -hmm. And this is this a regular menu or do y'all have regular menu items aside from the uh, the Raymond that you, yeah, you know, no, we switch do, we do, out? We do a blue plate special every day um, and then also like a sandwich special every day. Um, sides, you know, we do the regular hamburgers, turkey burgers, things like that. Um, that, that allow people to kind of get the comfort food that they really want. Right, right. Um, and, and that helps. Um, oh, it smells so good. Yeah, fresh and and uh, we'll add a little bit more. And pesto is something that's really easy for you to make at home too. Yes, yes. Lots of basil. Um, this actually does not have any pine nuts in it. Um, so it's basically olive oil, Parmesan cheese, and uh, and and uh, basil. No garlic? You don't have to put garlic uh, in there? There is a tiny bit of garlic in it, but not, not too much. Gotcha. Okay. So you're looking good there. Um, I'm at pretty close to temp right now. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. we're gonna sear it really good. And I'm gonna turn, get that good and hot. This is, almost looks like a risotto after you a mash bit, it yeah. with one of these. Clearly, if you were doing this at home and you wanted to have it creamier, then mm -hmm. that's when you would you definitely could, you wanna use cream, it. You could cream, you could add some Or just butter. blend it too, so that it would get down to some smaller pieces. That's right. So that is just so cool how you put it in a bag and cook it with water. Season it with salt and pepper. And I'm pretty, uh, I'm cooking at home, I'm pretty, uh, I salt pretty heavily. We don't do this at, at the hospital, um, but for instances like this, we, we cook it pretty hard, or salt it pretty good. It gives it a nice little crust, a nice little finish. 
it's essentially salt and pepper to taste. If you yeah. like less yeah. or you're on a special diet where you didn't, you need to contain your sodium intake some, um, I'm with you, I will, I will salt it. And that is this the- This is just clarified butter. So tell me a little bit about clarified butter too. Do you just take so regular butter? Take or? regular butter, bring it to a boil. You'll see a lot of the, um, the, the fat will kind of float to the top and you can skim that off. Um, it really helps, gives it a lot better flavor, but you taking the butter solids out and the water that's in there um, keeps the butter, keeps the, the clarified butter from burning. Oh, okay. Yeah. Get this good and hot. Looks like we're there. So about how many minutes would you sear this on each side? Because it's, it's just enough to brown it, right? Yeah, I like to get a really good crust on it. Okay. So a couple of minutes, um, you know, it really depends on how hot, what kind of stove you have, what kind of flame you have. Like I like it really nice and crusty um, because that's a lot of the flavors is the caramelization of the meat. Right. even take a spoon here and, and baste them of it. Gotcha. So you can baste the butter over it. He's sort of sliding the pan so that it doesn't stick, but it does get good and I brown. It, and the uh, nonstick pans work great for searing. I mean, yeah. they're some of the best. Uh, um, you know, I sear scallops in, in, in nonstick pans. I sear... Uh, they just work better. And, they do. And even the, from a cast iron, they, they, they just, they brown so much better. And so I'm, I'm uncharging it. You can kind of hear it. So it's releasing some of that pressure. Yeah. yeah, that'll happen. That happens? Oh yeah. Don't do this right before a dinner party, y'all. Make sure you have like two aprons on. So you just put that over a sink so that it doesn't make an incredible mess. That's right. Now is all the liquid going to come out like that? Some of it will, some of it won't. Okay. Um, it's a great way to do like carbonated grapes. Ooh. Um, just put your grapes in there and charge it a couple times. So you don't you even need the liquid when you do the grapes like uh, that? Yeah, no, you'll add your liquid and then the, the, uh, the, uh, so I'll dump the rest of our liquid out. I'll let you do that while I check the steak. Okay. It smells like pickles. Pickled vegetables. I might even do this. Take our strainer off. worked out beautifully. Yeah. So this part we can probably go ahead and start plating. Okay. Um, come right over here. You gonna bring a plate over here in the middle? Yep. Oh, sorry. And you just discard what's left yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, totally. Now, and I would think too that like when you usually to fast pickle probably makes it even crispier, like keeps mm -hmm. it crispier. Like if you let something sit for however many, 24 hours or whatever it takes to to pickle something, sometimes you lose a little bit of that crispiness. Right. But in this case, no. All right, so we've got our steaks done. I'm gonna place them in here. kind of the last, one of the last things that we're gonna do. So uh, this gadget again is a smoking gun. It's called the smoking gun. This is the professional model. Um, just came out a few weeks ago, a few months ago. Um, I'm gonna cover it with plastic wrap. Keep everything, keep the smoke in. Okay. And then we're gonna turn it on. Tuck this under there. 
And then you have, what is that that you're lighting? Or is this just- This, this, is, a, this is actually apple wood. Apple wood. And you, you just took some very small shavings. Mm -hmm. Oh, I smell it. Uh, sometimes you have to little, give it a little. It needs to have a vent. Yep. This is gonna give you a smoked flavor. So, you know, you've got this meal that you've cooked here in 15 minutes, probably, that's gonna come out in a smoked flavored way as that's if right. you had cooked it for eight, nine hours or longer. You can see the smoke, it's already kind of permeating. It doesn't take a whole lot. It smells great. Oh yeah, it's awesome. I would love to try one of these at home. I don't. I don't think. I mean, like you would want to put this directly under your vent hood. My alarms would yeah, go off. Well, I, um, yeah. As long as you get it good sealed like that, you can. It's you can minimize. Really, yeah. The fan, it's got a kind of a. I hear got, it. I hear the fan. Yeah, yeah, it's got a couple different settings where you can turn it up or turn it down. Um, it works great. They make a lot of different flavors of the wood. Um, and can you buy it just in those little chips just yeah. for this? Yep. Okay. For sure. So right. you might also um, at home, like if you could kind of maybe do a, a harder topped dish that mm -hmm. you could put a hole in for, for oh, the, yeah. the line. That way you leak a little bit less of the smoke out if you are worried. Um, in this case, we have a, a vent hood over here um, and it's we're on. Got our, yeah. It should. There we go. So you are sauteing some onion. Some onions. And then I see some mushrooms over That's there. Right. Those are baby portobello. They are. But you can find some, I and mean, you can get your radishes, you can get your tomatoes, all at the farmer's market when the farmer's market is in season. Um, right. You can get plenty of uh, basil to make mm -hmm. your pesto with. That's right. Uh, we also have onions. You can get mushrooms when they are available as well. Look how healthy this looks already on our plate here with our uh, cauliflower and our pickled vegetables. And these are looking great like just back a there. What's that? Those look great. They are. I'm gonna hit it with a piece of garlic. You just added in a whole clove of garlic. Just whole in there just to add to the flavor. All right. A little bit of our salt. And my black pepper is right here. Mm -hmm. And I don't like to cook the mushrooms too much. I like to keep them kind of whole and meaty so so to speak and I'm so this thing just runs its course and when yes. it stops smoking then it's done that's right but i'm going to kind of i'm going to plate them up two different ways okay so i'm going to take one and i'm going to slice it completely in half and as you can see you get a perfect medium rare all the way all edge the to way edge through. that's right wow look how tender that is too so we'll do that one like that. And then I'm just gonna leave that one kind of like that. It kind of gives it a different appearance. It gives you a different mm -hmm. color. You know, plating is something that you can do at home too. I mean, you don't, mm -hmm. it does help with the appearance and I think your overall enjoyment when you're making things at home, to put a little bit of effort into that. It's not, it's not hard. That's right. Put a little 
my strings here on the side. And then we have our sauce, which is our, our gastric. And you have left this, the entire time we've been doing this, you've left that on mm -hmm. just a super low simmer. Yep. You haven't had to go back to it and just stir it repeatedly, so not that's not an issue, partly because this is a nonstick pot. that I have grown that I added to it. Nice. And then we've got some chives here just to kind of give it a little brightness and finish. And there is your, your dinner. I kind of like to stack these a little bit. Gives you some different color and textures like that and it smells good it looks good and i think we spent less than an hour from start to finish i think so for this that's right that is great smells good looks good smells good looks good you can get a version of this at the cafe there in the hospital um, sometimes well we don't usually serve the tenderloin uh on our uh, line, but we do offer a uh, tenderloin on our uh, ramen. On your ramen, mm -hmm. gotcha. We do. And the ramen is what people go there for, and then they fall in love with they all do. the other things. You know, we've had thousands of people come through um, since we've uh, implemented the ramen bar. Um, you know, people come there just to eat the ramen. There's new people who come every day. There's people that come every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Wow. Um, yeah, it's been really remarkable. I'm going to have to make a trip out there. Yeah, absolutely, you should. Well, we'll see how this is. Thank you so much for being well, with us today. It's been Appreciate a it. Yep. Always good to see you. Absolutely. I encourage everyone to get out to um, the ramen bar at the Arkansas Heart Hospital um, and try it out. It smells so delicious that I cannot wait for us to, to taste it. Are you ready? I'm going to get okay. knife and fork. Please. I gotta try my tomato. Yeah? Yeah. I'll, I'll go with that. I want a little bit of this. Well, that's perfect. It's yeah. just almost like a pickly, but a little bit sweet, mm -hmm. too. Like not just quite a, a bed and, bread and butter kind of flavor, no, but. No, no. That is so incredibly tender. Yeah, the steak's phenomenal. Mmm. I'm gonna have to get one of those things for at home. They make them from several hundred dollars to now you can get them for a hundred bucks. I think that's that should be like the new kitchen gadget we all have. I'm really impressed with all these super cool tools which can be intimidating when mm -hmm. you see them. Right. But this was such an ease of use here for doing that. And the cauliflower is wonderful too. It really is. It's very much like a risotto texture, I mm -hmm. think, um, when you're eating with that pesto flavor. It's just absolutely pure, so. Okay, so we have some plates to finish here. We hope you tune in with us for our very next episode of Chop the Rock. Thank you.